JR6 and Range 11. In touch. Now at 10, cleanup of a national forest is underway following the bust of a major pot growing operation. They, they have pretty advanced irrigation systems that they, they put together for these sites. Plus, prepared for an attack, an anti-terrorism drill unfolds in the Duluth Superior Harbor. But first... I thought it was kind of a rip-off. All in all, I thought it was, was good. Mixed reaction toward Congressman Chip Kravak's Duluth Town Hall. Live from the Northlands News Center, this is the KBJR6 and Range 11 News at 10. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kevin Jacobson. And I'm Michelle Lee. Duluth voters finally got what they wanted from Congressman Chip Kravak. Well, kind of. The Republican representative answered the plea from his constituents to hold a town hall meeting in Duluth. Leanne Walls has tonight's top story at 10 from the newsroom. Leanne, you were at this afternoon's meeting. There was a big turnout. It really was a packed house, Michelle and Kevin. The room was full of both supporters and non-supporters. The impromptu town hall comes after Congressman Chip Kovac was greeted by protesters following a luncheon he was at yesterday. Asking why you aren't raising taxes on people who can afford it. Tonight's town hall in Duluth got a little intense at times, but with so many opinions in one room, that's almost expected. The town hall began with a 20-minute PowerPoint presentation by Congressman Kravak. He outlined the nation's fiscal problems, then turned things over to the audience members. From college tuition to health care, same-sex marriage to job growth, people formed a long line behind the podium for the chance to ask Congressman Kravak a question. It, you know, I, I think out of respect for others, you need to not shout out, listen to everybody's opinions. Everybody in the room had one. And uh, all in all, I thought it was was good. I thought it was kind of a ripoff, being that he uh, smoke screened us for uh, 30 minutes and then uh, gave us 30 minutes to ask questions. There's a lot of line. You know, I was in the line. I didn't get to ask my question. People also wanted to know what the congressman planned to do for the 8th Congressional District if he runs again and wins in the next year's election. He said jobs is his number one priority in getting PolyMet on the Iron Range up and running. Well, Leanne, obviously people were there from both sides. Did you get the sense people got what they wanted out of this town hall meeting? You know, Michelle, the congressman didn't have time to take everybody's questions, so some people, you know, walked away upset about that. He did, however, direct those people to give their information to his secretary. Okay, Leanne Walls reporting for us in the newsroom. Leanne, thank you so much. You're welcome. In other news tonight, six men have been charged in the largest marijuana bust ever made in Ashland County. All six are charged with conspiracy to manufacture marijuana, possession of marijuana with intent to distribute, and distributing marijuana. Jordan Winan was in the Shawamaga Nicollet National Forest today where the million-dollar field of weed was destroyed. Digging, taping, and cleaning up the huge marijuana cultivation site has been a huge effort. The growing operation in the Shawamigan Nicollet National Forest would have made a profit of nearly $1 million, which authorities say isn't your average ma and pa growing operation. They have 1.5 million acres of the National Forest, so finding a site where they can, in their minds, go undetected and knowing how many trees to take out to allow the right amount of sunlight in, they, they have pretty advanced irrigation systems that they they put together for these sites. As cleanup continues here in the Shawamaga National Forest, questions about how water was brought into this site are now becoming clear. Generators are used to generate electricity, obviously, that is, is generating a pump, and the pump is pumping water from the river, which is about 50 yards from here, through a elaborate hose system. This is one of a series of hundreds of large holes dug to hide those generators. The weed farmers also pumped in steroids to spur growth in the cannabis field so they could harvest a fast, robust crop. Good for the marijuana, but very bad for the forest ecosystem. The biggest thing is the fertilizer, and they use a lot of fertilizer, which is really bad for the water. It gets down into the soil, it can get into the groundwater, it can get into the rivers. We have a lot of trout streams, we have a lot of wildlife, we want to help protect them. The sophisticated operators cut down enough trees to make way for their crop, but left enough trees to hide their operation. From the air, I would, I would guess it'd be pretty hard to pick out from you know, normal undisturbed forest. Along with plants, miles of hose, vats for fertilizer, and one unlucky rabbit's foot were all removed from the forest today. Jordan Wynan, the Northlands News Center. 
and efforts have already begun to restore the forest. New tonight at 10, a consumer alert. Thank you for calling to Harbors Federal Credit Union, 24 hours card activation services. Presenter your 16 digits card number. Police are warning tonight about a scam aimed at customers of the Two Harbors Federal Credit Union. Authorities say an email or text message informs customers their account has been deactivated. Customers are then urged to call a phone number and provide a 16 credit card number. A 16 digit credit card number, at least 20 people along the North Shore have already fallen victim to this scam. If you receive this message or a similar one, you are urged to ignore it and contact your local bank. At least 230 impaired motorists have been taken off the roads as a result of a statewide DWI crackdown that runs through Labor Day. Last weekend was the first weekend for the Minnesota Department of Public Safety's nationwide Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. Officials say added enforcement and education are factors in the continuing decline of alcohol-related traffic deaths. 131 people died in alcohol-related traffic crashes last year. The war on terror sparked by the 9-11 attacks has been underway now nearly 10 years. America continues to train its forces to fight terrorism on the home front should it ever happen again. Today, that anti-terrorism drill training happened in the Twin Ports and Dave Anderson was there. It's not unusual to see the Coast Guard Auxiliary at boat landings offering free vessel safety checks. Wednesday morning, though, they were there for a different reason, letting boaters know an anti-terrorism drill was going on. We're on the boat landings to tell people that this is just an exercise and that they should boat safely and stay away from the activity. The drill is called Operation Down Under because the imaginary threat revolves around underwater explosives planted throughout the harbor. Agencies from the local to national level took part. Uh, it's important to conduct exercises like this in order to streamline that interoperability and make sure that we are prepared as best we can to combat any sort of maritime threat here in Duluth and, and Superior. The drill allows the various agencies to practice their incident command system skills. That's a unified command structure developed in the 70s to give emergency groups a common language to speak. The ICS system is a tool that we have that enables us to work together in a much more streamlined way. Though the exercise was serious business, it was also an enjoyable experience for all the boat-minded people taking part. I mean, it's absolutely fun for all of us getting to work with other agencies, getting to learn you know, their best practices to make our jobs better. In the harbor, Dave Anderson, the Northlands News Center. Operation Down Under is the biggest anti-terrorism drill held in the Twin Ports so far. The last big exercise was back in 2006. That was called Operation Kichigumi Guardian. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker has declared a state of emergency in response to the thousands of acres of downed trees and debris in northwestern Wisconsin. Almost two million trees were blown down in severe storms in July and in August. The governor is asking state agencies to help in the removal of these downed trees. Governor Walker says that if the debris is not removed, it could cause serious problems this winter with snow removal. Walker says that this is the worst storm damage the state has seen in more than 40 years. More than 270 Northland veterans got special treatment today at the 17th annual Duluth Veterans Standdown. The Minnesota Assistance Council for Veterans headed up the event at the Duluth Depot, having on-site assistance for veterans in need. The standdown's concept was used during the Vietnam War in order to provide a safe haven for troops returning from combat operations. Just like in the past, today's standdown gave veterans a variety of services. We've got everything from clothes to housing to Veterans claims the VA, the big VA is here. Uh, Silver Bay, we've got, uh, of course, the legal clinic that's going on. That's really significant, helping a lot of veterans. Longtime regional director Durbin Keeney says the stand down is all about giving back to the men and women who've given so much. One of the Northland's longest serving broadcasters died unexpectedly this morning. Authorities say radio talk show host Lou Latto passed away at his home on Fish Lake while getting ready for his radio show today. Latto started in radio at the age of 14 in Cloquet and then went on to work at or own several stations in the Northland. Latto was the host of the region's longest running talk show on WDSM. Another of his claims to fame was organizing the 1959 Buddy Holly concert at the Duluth Armory. Lato was just 71 years old.